we, we, you hear us say this statement. You hear me every, if, you, if I preach just about every Sunday, I, you hear this statement, blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Now, um, it's not just some words or just some verbiage that we use just to throw out because it's some nice Christian term. I, I really, something that we've got to get into our spirit um, because see, it, it's not a mindset. It's a heart condition. Right? It's not a mindset. It's a heart condition. We're going to talk a little bit more about that this morning as we walk through this. But we have to get the, the, the thought of blessed to be a blessing. We have to get it into our spirit. We have to have an, a revelation and understanding of it. And I think that's one reason, one of the reasons several years ago when, when I really preached a sermon or series in, in regards to that. And though we'll touch on it um, over this month, the, the idea is there's something that just really stirred in my heart in regards to that. Blessed to be a blessing. Now listen, blessed to be a blessing, most of the time we think of blessed to be a blessing so I have finances. And that's a part of it, but that's not all of it. In fact, I would say that if that's the only way you see it, you, you minimize really how you can be a blessing in a lot of other ways. But um, as, as, uh, as, as we talk about that over the next several weeks, um, I want to I encourage you. I'm going to ask um, David Russell to come. And as he comes, I've got one other announcement. And I've got a mic that you can use here. But David Russell is teaching um, our Wednesday night. And I'm, I, won't, I won't steal anything from him. Uh, but as he comes, this is the month that we, um, we are a blessing to our community. And we are doing uh, Thanksgiving baskets again. And so it's in our heart, it's our desire to do at least 20 baskets. And if we do 20 baskets, we're, we, we, we feel like that we can do that for about $50 a basket. And so if we did 20 baskets, and if you know math, 20 times 50 is $1,000. $1,000 by itself seems like it's more, more than we can handle. But if you'll just take your bite and we'll, we'll get that together. Some of you, the Lord will put it on your heart to give more than 50 and maybe 100, maybe 1,000. Hey, listen, if we get more, we're going to produce more. How's that? And because uh, we want to be a blessing in this season where we can be thankful. One of the things that we can be thankful, the uh, way that we can be thankful is to be generous to other people. And so Thanksgiving baskets, if you want to begin giving, you can give online. Just make sure you, you put in the notes what it's for. Thanks, you can just say Thanksgiving baskets. Um, you can give on the, in, in either one of the boxes on your way out. If you put it in an envelope or however that is, make sure you designate for Thanksgiving baskets. But I'm just asking you, will you help us do this? Will you help us do this? We can't do it unless, unless you and I work together and pull this, pull this off, right? And so um, it's quite fitting that we begin November in and, and, and the series that I'm in because David Russell, no Ken, he's on the good side of the Russells. I'm on the other side of the track, Russells. <laughs> I don't know that. I'm just being silly. But um, David um, is teaching a series called God's Economy versus the World's Economy. And so will you just give us a little bit of insight of what we're going to be walking through over the next several weeks? Absolutely, Pastor Scott. <laughs> Thank you very much. And good morning, everybody. Uh, you know, if you, you know, as you plug into social media or if you watch or listen to the news, everybody's talking about the economy, right? Yeah. yeah. Have you been to a grocery store lately? <laughs> what's up with that? Yeah. You know, and everybody's concerned about well, what's the Federal Reserve going to do next and what are interest rates going to do to my credit card payments or my mortgage or things like that, okay? Right. And so if you look at a, a graph of what happens with the world economy, or the stock market, it goes like this, doesn't it? It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Wouldn't it be nice if it didn't do that, if it was just level and steady all the time and it didn't fluctuate or change? That's God's economy. Right. He, his economy is an economy of abundance. Abundance means more than enough to meet your need. Well, why is that important? We are not to be a storehouse of God's blessing. We're not just supposed to store his blessings up just for us and the people we love. We are to be a channel of God's blessing in the lives of other people. So if we have enough to meet our need, but we have more than enough, we have some extra to share with other people. People in our church, in our family, in our community, 
people we've never met and probably never will meet in this life. God needs people that he can trust to be yes. that type of channel of blessing yes. in the Good. lives of other people. And that's what we're talking about on Wednesday nights, okay? And so some people may say, oh, well, no, you're talking about money in the church. That's too materialistic, okay? My counter would be, I don't think we talk enough about money in the church. Because unfortunately, believers don't understand God's right. economy. Right. And they don't understand how they can connect into that economy Good. to be a blessing in their own lives yes. and the lives of other people. There are 2,300 scriptures, verses in scripture on money and riches in the Bible. 2,300. In Jesus' earthly ministry, he shared 39 parables with us that are recorded in scripture. 11 of those were about riches and money. That's more than any other topic that he taught on. So if Jesus thinks it's important, I think it's okay if we talk about it, okay? Our primary scripture is from Matthew chapter 6. It's Jesus himself speaking. And he said, seek ye first. Seek ye first right. the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. Well, what are all these things? It's stuff. It's houses. It's cars. It's things that he knows we need. But what do you put first? Because it doesn't really matter what you got. What matters is how you got it and what your priorities are. Good. And that's what we're going to be talking about. So yeah. this Wednesday night, I'm going to be sharing my personal testimony of how I made choices in my life for my career and what I did without consulting God about it. Not because of rebellion, but because of ignorance. Because I didn't receive this type of teaching. I've been in church my entire life. So I know about the Holy Spirit, and I know about getting saved, and I know about those things. But I didn't really understand how the Holy Spirit is not just for ministry, yes. but it's also for our everyday lives, for every aspect of our lives, yes. including our careers and the choices that we make like that. And all of that determines how we invest our most important commodity. And that's not money or gold or jewels. It's our time. Every one of us every day gets the same number of hours a day to invest. It's the same as kings and billionaires and everybody else. Right. And how we invest our time determines a lot about our prosperity and our happiness in life. And you may say, well, why are you teaching this? Why isn't Pastor Scott doing this? It's because Scott has known me for a long time, and he knows I have a kind of a unique perspective on this, in that I've been in the secular world for, with a career over 40 years, most of that in the corporate sector, okay? And about 15 years ago, my company sent me back to school to get an MBA degree. And you may not know what that means, but essentially you get a black belt in spreadsheets, okay? <laughs> so you know a lot about work in financial stuff. Well, in addition to that career, my other perspective is, is that for over 41 years, I've been a licensed minister. And I've served in all different types of offices and positions of ministry in the church. So in my secular job, I've always filtered that through my ministry lens because I know what the Word of God says about it. Good. And, and so what I'm going to share Wednesday night is my testimony of the choices that I made that led me into poverty into desperate circumstances for me and for my family and how I got that straight and where I learned how to get where God could bless me. Good. And that's where God wants you. He has a plan and a purpose yes. for every one of you and he wants you where he can bless you so that you can be that blessing to other people. So I'm gonna talk about that Wednesday night and then the following Wednesday night, I'm gonna talk about how you don't talk yourself out of your blessing. The words of our mouths are powerful. The Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue, and that's no joke. So words are containers. They contain our thoughts. They contain our faith or our fears, our anger, our love. It's very important that we choose our words wisely, especially as we speak about ourselves, about our children, the people that we love, yes. and and of how we deal with the words other people speak over us. So I'm gonna deal with all that, and I hope that it'll be a blessing to you so that you can enjoy the abundance that God's had planned for you. So hopefully either online or in person, I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night.
um, I, encourage, I encourage you to be here. I encourage you to be here. Um, I know some of you would say, well, what about child care and all those things? And, <laughs> and, and I, I understand. I'm not, I, I don't want to be um, too... Um, minimal on this thought, but hey, what did they used to do before they had child care and before they had children's ministries and all that stuff? They used to sit in church. It's an, ama- it's an amazing thing. Um, in fact, last week when we had the Spanish church with us, you know, most of the time, a good portion of the time, their, their kids are in, home with, in service with them. I'm like, how do they do that? Well, because they train them <laughs> to do that. And so, um, hey, bring them. Well, we, we, have, uh, we have opportunities for them to, they don't have to sit here and the, the entirety of the time and things, but um, don't, don't let, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that to be uh, uh, something, something that's going to hinder you. In fact, if somebody said, I will give you a million dollars, but, now and I know I use this kind of as, a, as an illustration for us, you're going to find out whatever, you, you're going to call your neighbor, you're going to call your enemy, you can call somebody and say, hey, will you take care of these kids? <laughs> hey, kids, stay here. Don't answer the phone and don't answer the door. <laughs> don't do that. But you know what I'm saying? You're going to do whatever you can. Well, we're trying to offer you something that the Word of God is going to give you something greater than silver and gold. And so um, I'm, I'm actually beginning this week a series that I'm just, um, I've just titled it like this, Treasure Keepers or Kingdom Seekers. Treasure keepers are kingdom seekers. And actually, we're going to talk about hoarders today. <laughs> I'm not looking at anybody. Father, we love you today. We thank you. Amen. Give, give Reich a big hand. Thanks, Reich, for helping us. Um, as David said, money's always a hot topic. So I thought that... Um, I don't know if you've ever heard this illustration or seen this illustration. Uh, a young lady as um, at college, and she has some bad news, so she emails, she texts, <laughs> how it is. She emails her her parents and saying, "Hey, listen, um, my boyfriend and I, we've been living together for the last six months. I know you didn't know about it, and I know you don't appreciate that, but we've been living together, and I'm pregnant. And oh, by the way, I've also wrecked the car that you gave me." And then she, she sends that email. And then she comes back and sends a second email and says, all of that information I told you is really false. That's not true. I'm not pregnant. I'm not living with my boyfriend. I didn't wreck the car, but I did fail my calculus in college. <laughs> See, it wasn't quite as bad. It was, it was, oh, this is horrible. What are we going to do? But, oh, you just failed. Oh, okay. Um, right? The news wasn't. And so I, I thought about coming up maybe this morning, come up with some cute I'm thinking, hey, we're going to talk about this, and everybody go, oh, no, no, we're going to talk about money. <laughs> um, and really, it's not about money. Really, I'm talking about your heart. Um, money becomes the issue because, um, uh, because of lack of knowledge and a lack of understanding. Um, listen, I also recognize that there have been people, there have been situations that, that people have tried to manipulate and, and abuse the principles of God. Uh, listen, but it doesn't just happen um, scripturally. People abuse and manipulate with their power. I, in this season, in this election season, people try to manipulate and abuse and try to get votes. And I'm not saying for everybody, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be political. I'm just saying people are always saying, and yet very rarely do we, do we get uh, um, upset about it. But in the church, when we start talking about money, it's like, oh, that's all they want. And of course, you know, I've used the illustration, well, when AT&T goes up on your phone bill, you just call them and tell them all you're about is money. You wouldn't do that because you anticipate that because that's the economics of our society. But I want to talk this morning for just a few moments as, as we begin this. Um, are you a treasure keeper? Are you a treasure hoarder? Or are you a kingdom seeker? And so um, in Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12 um, verses 13 through 21. I want to read this. 
Uh, and then, then I want to walk through some pieces. Jesus gives us some other I- insight in this. But it says, someone from the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Friend, he said to him, who appointed me a judge or arbitrator over you? He then told them, watch out and be on guard against all greed because one's life is not in the abundance of his possessions. Then he told them a parable. A rich man's land was very productive. He thought to himself, what should I do since I don't have anywhere to store my crops? I will do this. He said, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and all my goods there. Then I'll say to myself, you have many goods stored up for many years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is demanded of you and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? That is how it is with the one who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. That verse 21, also we read it in the Amplified and is really the reason I'm naming it, at least this sermon, this. So it is with the one who continues to lay up and hoard possessions for himself and is not rich in his relation to God. This is how he fares. Will you pray with me? Lord, I just ask that as we come to this, Lord, that we would not only be open to you, Lord, but we'd allow the Holy Spirit to to speak to our hearts, to our lives, not only in regards to finances, but in in regards to every area of our lives. And Lord, help us to be kingdom seekers. And Lord, I just thank you for it. I bless you for it. In the name of Jesus, would you you pray this with me? I'm going to just ask that you would, um, you can repeat this after me. It won't be up there, so you'll have to listen. Um, Lord, I receive all that you have for me. <laughs> Lord, wake me up. <laughs> no, no, that's not a part of it. <laughs> Lord, I receive all that you have for me. Give me the courage, the grace, the faith to live in obedience to you. Amen. 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 So, have you ever been in an older home? I'm not talking about like a 20 or 30. I'm talking about an old home. Um, 70 plus, 100 years old. Have you ever gone into an old home? And, and sometimes you go into it and it's, they're really cool, right? You see all the ornate. You, you look at the, the crown molding in the base and it's real ornate. It's not like you can go down there, go down to Home Depot and purchase it because it's not even on the same level. I mean, the craftsmanship is just outstanding, right? Um, and you see all the nice things in, in those older homes, and you're like, the, uh, of course, one of the things you don't like about it is there's not much insulation, so they're normally crickety and cold and a little windy drafts coming through. But one of the things that I've noticed about old homes is that when you go into the bedrooms, they have small closets. Um, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever walked into an older house and, and you go, man, this closet's so small. But of course, it's small based upon how we do it because what we do is we jam them full and jam them full and jam them full and jam them full. And the reason now they're not just closets, but they're rooms. If you watch um, some of the home... DIY networks and all that stuff, and they're remodeling, and they, and 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 I like those, and I, and I pay attention to them, but um, that their that their closets are small, and we would say that they're not very functional, but they're not functional by today's standard, and it's not functional today's standard because we have more stuff <laughs> than what they had, right? Now I I uh, as, as we. As we walk through this, um, I, I came across um, this article. It was, it was actually a study, and it said that many Americans struggle with clutter. I, I, don't raise your hand. Um, I'm not asking you. About, <laughs> We're going to begin HA, Hoarders Anonymous. Hi, my name is Scott, <laughs> and I'm a hoarder. <laughs> uh, I come from a long line of hoarders, actually. <laughs> and uh, 
But Americans struggle with clutter. Um, it's one of the reasons that we see a pretty popular, uh, popular movement of the simplicity being uh, reducing things. But researcher G, uh, GN or Gene Arnold said, contemporary U.S. households have more possessions per household than any society in global history. Her colleague, Anthony Grish, Grish notes that our homes reflect the material abundance. Hyper-consumerism is evident in many spaces like garages, corners of home offices, and even sometimes in the corners of living rooms and bedrooms. The researchers continued, we have lots of stuff. We have many ways in which we accumulate possessions in our home, but we have few processes for getting rid of them. The United States has 3.1% of the world's children, but consumes 40% of the world's toys. Now, now listen, I'm not, I'm not preaching against toys. I'm not preaching against having stuff. If you go and read what Paul writes to Timothy, he says that God has given us all things to enjoy. And the, the problem is, is not possessions. That's, that's really not the issue. Possessions isn't the issues. The, the issue is really this. Do our possessions have us? Are we possessed by them? Now, remember, we're talking about, are you going to be a keeper, a treasure keeper, or a kingdom seeker? And so Jesus, he, he uses this parable, and he, he used parables to teach principles of the kingdom. He said in verse 15, he says, watch out and be on guard against all greed. That's in the Holman, uh, the Holman translation. But if you were to go to the New King James, it uses the word covetousness. Be aware of or be, be on guard against all Things that, that we covet. Now, when we think of covets, it's like, well, Stan's has got, no, Tiffany's got a nice truck. <laughs> nice white truck. Oh, Lord, I don't covet that truck. I thank you. No, no, listen. But it's, that's, what, that's what a lot of times we think of coveting. It's just about coveting that. But it's all types of covetousness. And Holman uses the word or identifies it as greed, which I think is really a good uh, a good thought for us, that we need to be aware and on guard against all, t all types of greed in our lives. See, because a hoarder, and, and we can use and, and identify them as somebody that is selfish or stingy, and, and, and when they're that way, they have a closed heart and hands to others. And, and not only do they have a closed heart and hands to other people, most of the time they have a closed heart and a closed hand to God. That if I let it go, then I'm not going to have anything else. If I let it go, then what's going to happen to me? And Jesus gives us some insight. Not only does he give us a, a parable to teach us uh, kingdom principles, he also gives us understanding what it is to be a kingdom seeker. He says, he says of, of the man in the parable, he says, a man that is stingy or a man that only um, stores up treasures for himself. He's a treasure keeper that he's not being rich toward God. Now, now hear me. Please hear me. I'm not saying if you have stuff that you're wrong. I like stuff. I like, in fact, I went into my closet this morning to find the clothes that I would wear. I actually picked out two outfits, and I go to Tiffany, which one? Thank God I had two. And you know something? I, that was my only two outfits. I had several more shirts in there. How many of you struggled this morning trying to figure out what to wear? Unless your wife picked it out for you. <laughs> what am I going to wear? Well, am I going to wear blue today? Am I going to wear green? Am I going to wear? I, thought, I think I'm going to go with brown. I wore blue last week. I'm going to wear brown this week. Right, and I thank God for that. I'm not, I'm not saying that's horrible, so I'm not, don't. Don't, don't misrepresent what I'm trying to talk about today about being a treasure keeper or being a hoarder of the things of God. Moses, though, in talking about an individual that's not rich toward God, Moses would warn the Israelites about forgetting God. In Deuteronomy, excuse me, chapter 8, verses 11 through 19, he says, Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today, lest... 
when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which the fiery serpents and scorpions and the thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and my might of my hand have gained me this wealth. That was the mindset of the man in the parable. Now, it's just a parable. It wasn't an actual person but in the, the man in the parable, he had forgotten who is, who is his source. And in verse 18 of Deuteronomy 8, it says, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which you swore to your fathers as it is this day. And so uh, this morning as we begin to walk through this, we want to remember the Lord in all the things that we have. And all the things that he's given to us, we want to remember that it's the Lord that is our source. God is our source. God is our source. And one of the reasons we don't, one of the reasons we are hoarders when it comes to the things that God's blessed us with is we be, because we have this mindset, well, I worked for it and I earned it and so it's mine. But when I say yes to Jesus, everything that I am and everything that I would desire to be and everything that I own is his. Now, it's not because, well, because he wants it all. No, no, no. It's that way because my life becomes his. And everything about my life is his. My finances, my relationships, my job, whatever, everything is about him. So it's not about, it's not about, well, I'm going to hang on to this because I worked hard for it. And, 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 and I believe it's important that we work hard. We ought to be great examples of good, faithful, steady workers. Don't, don't be lazy at your workplace. Don't try to get out of work. Don't try to hide behind uh, everybody else and say, oh, I'm just going to do what I need to do and do the, you know, so I can continue to get a paycheck. That's the world's way of thinking. And so possessions are not the issue, but are you possessed by them would be a question that we would ask. But Jesus gives us an understanding, or deeper understanding, in the following verses. Um, in Luke chapter 22, verses 22 through 34, and I'm, I'm not going to read it like that. I'm actually going to break it down. Um, but in verse 22, he says, then he said to his disciples, after he's told them the parable, then he begins to give some explanation or give some understanding. He says, then he said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. Well, what am I going to wear tomorrow? What am I? I don't know if it's like this at your house, but it's like this at my house sometimes. We'll go to breakfast. What are we going to have for dinner tonight? We hadn't even finished breakfast, and we're worried about what we're going to do for dinner tonight. Now, listen, I, I, that's, that's kind of silly, and, and I'm not trying to say don't do that. I'm just saying that so many times we're so consumed and so worried. I, I remember we had uh, a young lady in our youth ministry when we were in Grapevine, and, and she was just like that. The thing about her, she was this tall and this big, man, and it was like, You're, what are you worried about food for? <laughs> I mean, where are you going to put it? Um, but see, what he's saying or what we can see in this is that a hoarder's heart is always worried that I'm not going to have enough. It's going gonna, it's gonna to vanish. It's going to go away. And he also says in verse 29, and we see it in verse 29, he says, don't keep striving for what you should eat or what you should drink, and don't be anxious. And get this, he says, for the Gentile world eagerly seeks all these things, and your father knows that you need them. When it says for the Gentile, in some translations, it says pagans. Do you, do you understand when we say pagans or Gentiles? What they're saying is, is people that are unbelievers, people that are away from God, those people that we would look at and go, they're lost, they need help. 
And what, he's, what Jesus is saying, he's saying, don't be anxious. Don't continue to strive for the things of life um, because when you strive for it, all it's causing is you to become anxious. That's the exactly the way the world lives. And they're anxious. The stock market bottoms out, they bottom out. The stock market shoots, you know. And that's, that's why we've, we've got to understand God's economy because God's economy is not a roller coaster ride. There are pieces and things that we have in this system. I understand that. But that's not my ultimate source. Christ is my ultimate source. So a hoarder's heart is worrisome. A hoarder's heart is anxious. But he goes on to say in, in the following verses is, don't be afraid, little flock, because, man, you, we've got to get this in our heart. Don't be afraid, little flock, little flock, because your father delights to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. The father desires, it's in, his, it's in his desire to give you the kingdom. The sad thing is, is our small little empires that we build up, sometimes we will, we will trade what we can build rather than receiving the vastness of the kingdom of God. And we do it because we're, fe we're fearful. We do it because we're anxious. We do it because we lack understanding. We lack knowledge. We do it because we don't know what the word of God says to us. And I'm telling you this morning is that if you want to be a treasure keeper, you can't be a treasure keeper in a kingdom, or a, a treasure, yeah, keeper in a, in a kingdom seeker. Because you have to let go to receive all that God has for you. That's one of the reasons I ask, that, ask us to pray that prayer. Lord, I want to receive all that you have for me. But sometimes to receive what he has for us, I have to let go of those things that I hold as treasures in my own life. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights to give you the kingdom. Um, as, as I kind of looked at those verses, I realized we just came out of a, a series of no fear. And, and, and really, um, the result of fear is anxiety and worry. That's what fear causes us to do. What, what am I going to do? And I'm telling you, that God has a solution. God has a plan. God has a way to be a blessing to you so that we can be a blessing to others. Be, like I said in the beginning, um, blessed to be a blessing is not some mindset thing that we come up with. It has to be a heart condition that we allow our heart to be open to the Lord. And so in order not to have a, a hoarder's heart and to be a kingdom seeker, three things. One, to receive, to receive the kingdom, we have to live by the kingdom principles. To receive the kingdom, you have to live by kingdom principles. You can't say, well, I'm going to dabble in a little bit over here and try to mix it in over there. It doesn't work that way. We have to, to receive the kingdom, we have to live by kingdom principles. Verse 31, but seek his kingdom Matthew 6.33 says, but seek first his kingdom. But Luke says, but seek his kingdom, and these things will be provided for you. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Make money bags for yourselves that won't grow old, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. See, Generosity, being a kingdom, uh, to be a kingdom seeker means that we have to have a generous heart. And generosity is a heart issue. Being generous is a heart issue. You know, some of the most generous people in the world are poor people. Go to Guatemala. They have houses with dirt floors. And the reason we say this is because we've been there. They have dirt floors. And yet, they're, they're going to do everything they can to be a blessing to you. That's right. Why? Because it's, it's not about, well, I don't have enough. I, don't ha I, I said something a while ago about um, helping, helping us put together 20 Thanksgiving baskets. 
And some, probably not in here, it's probably somebody online was saying, well, I can't do that. I just don't, I just don't have it. And, and here's one of the things that I've, I've recognized. God doesn't ever ask us to give what he's not going to make a way for and provide for us. So what we're saying is, well, I don't have it. So we clench our fists and we become treasure keepers. Now, listen, I realize there's things that we, I, I don't know if there's any of you here that are collectors of anything, and I'm not saying that's particularly bad. I'm not saying go sell all your collections. That's not what I'm trying, that don't, please don't think that, because that means I got to sell my Star Wars stuff, and I don't want to do that. Come on. That's not what I'm talking about, Right? But you know, if the Lord says, hey, I, I, want you to, I want you to give it to me. I can hang on to it and say, oh, but God, these are, these are one of a kind. I can make a lot of money with this. I could do. But you know something? That's only the kingdom that I can build. But if I'll release it, I have the entirety of the kingdom of God at my disposal, so to speak. Can I tell you something? The little building, the little building of a kingdom that I can make is not even not anywhere comparable to the kingdom that God has for us. So to receive the kingdom, we have to live by kingdom principles. Generosity, it's what he says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Make money back for yourselves that won't grow old. But generosity is a heart issue. Being a blessing is a heart issue, not an amount issue. In fact, we see and, and we see Jesus. It says that that he's he's setting, and and it's a picture. A lot of times we don't even we read through it and don't pay much attention to it. But it says that Jesus was setting at the offering box, and he was watching. Right? You know you know the story. He's setting at the he's setting in the temple. He's setting at the offering box. Or at least he's at a place that he can watch. And he calls his disciples. And says, "Hey." This lady gave less than all of them, but she gave more. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Got too excited. <laughs> she gave more <laughs> than all of them. Because it wasn't about the amount. It was about the heart. It says she, they all gave out of their abundance, but she gave out of her poverty. Paul, Paul writing to the church at Corinth and he's talking about the Macedonians and he says, hey, they gave out of their, out of their lack, they gave abundantly. And so it's not an issue of what do I have? What are you willing to give the Lord? Probably in the next several weeks, um, we, we may go to the story of, of Jesus feeding the 5,000. If you read it in, in, the par, in, in uh, two of the Gospels, it says this, Jesus asked, what do you have? And he says, oh, we have five loaves and two fishes. But if you go to John and read that same story, it says this, what do you have? And one of the disciples says, there's a little boy here that has five loaves and two fishes. The disciples didn't have anything but a little boy had five loaves and two fishes. And he goes, no, I, I, I'm going to hang on to it. Look at it. Look, think about this. Oh, no, you can't have it. This, my mom gave me this lunch. And, if, and if, if I gave it away, she'd be mad at me. And if I give it away, then I won't eat. And I've got to go home. And I don't want to be hungry. Oh, I, I can't give it away. But for some reason, and somehow, this little boy gives away five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus feeds five. And you're worried about, well, all I've got is $2. I can give $2 to this, Pastor Scott. I, I'm not going to do, I, I can't do anything for you, but can I tell you something? Your $2 in his hands will far exceed and do anything you could ever ask or think. Will you be generous? It's not, it's not an amount issue. It's a heart issue. And so generosity, get this, generosity is the antidote to selfishness and stinginess. Oh, well, since I'm using this word, generosity is the antidote for hoarding. Yeah. Who would have ever thought? Now, now I, obviously, I'm young enough, and, but even when I was younger, 
Who would have ever thought they would have had a TV show, reality show called Hoarders? Most people wouldn't allow anyone in their house if they, <laughs> most people, but now you're going to give me some money to come and show, I'll let you, let me show all my stuff to all the world, but it's hoarders, and we've got, oh, I can't believe they're that way, and yet how often are we that way in our spirit? How often are we that way in our hearts? And maybe our, maybe our home isn't that way, or maybe we don't have the, those places, but when, when the Lord begins to say, hey, will, will you let me have that? You know, oh, but God, if I let go of this, I'm, I don't, how am I going to eat? How am I going to do this? And so you can either be a treasure keeper or a kingdom seeker. And Jesus says, all of these things will be added to you. See, generosity this morning is not just about money, but it also includes our serving and our giving of ourselves. See, I, I've known people even in the church who give money but we can't give in the effort. Uh, we, we don't just give um, to pay off our responsibility to serve others. Well, I, I give a lot in the church, so I don't have to do anything. Well, your attitude's wrong. Your heart's wrong. Because you're not being a kingdom seeker you're being a treasure keeper. See, one of the things we have to understand is that God's kingdom will not run out of provision for you. God's kingdom will not run out of provision for you. That's why we hold on to it. Well, what if he didn't come through? We sing this morning about his faithfulness. Oh, he's faithful on Sunday morning in church, but on Monday when that, when all the other things begin to happen in life, oh, we don't sing it quite as loud then. It's like, great is your faithfulness. No, or we sing it, great is your faithfulness to Stan. Great is your faithfulness to Sam. Great is your... Man, that rhymed. I need to come up with some more. But, but the point is, is, is the truth is, is he's faithful to you in every moment. Even when it looks like there's a storm, now what am I going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a kingdom seeker. Amen. A kingdom seeker. So be a kingdom seeker. Like I said, there are things that, 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 I, that I treasure, that I enjoy. But I don't want to hold it so tightly that I miss what he has for me. That's greater. That's so much greater than what I can hang and hold on to for myself. Be a kingdom seeker. Be a kingdom seeker. Over the next several weeks, as we've done over the last several years, we're going to begin communicating about our 2023. Can you believe it? we're just we're just weeks away from 2023? Can you believe it? we're standing, looking in, peering over, and we're planning and we're 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 believing God for things in 2023. I know you're trying to you're just trying to God. How can I get through Christmas? Help me get through Christmas and all those things. And 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 I'm fully understanding of that and can appreciate all of it. But as a, as a church, as as what God has for us, yeah, we're we're planning 2023, 24, 25. We're planning beyond. But in 2023. Um, as, as we've done over the last several years, we, we have what we call our impact offering or our in, impact fund. And over the next several weeks, we're going to begin discussing and talking about that. Some of the things that we're believing God to, to help us do, believing God for. Um, on Sunday, December the 4th, I, I, I really am hesitant to tell you this date because it'll be the date that everybody's going to either be sick, out of town, or... <laughs> 
oh, Pastor, I just couldn't be there today. It was just <laughs> really difficult. So be careful. I may, I may do a bait and switch on you. But December the 4th, we'll receive pledges and an offering for our 2023 impact fund. What, what, is that, what is that for? It's so that we can fulfill the vision, the mission that God's called us to do as a church. Amen. It's an opportunity for us to collectively come together, to team together, and to team with God to make an impact. As we, as we say often, and that we, we want to be a New Testament church making an impact in our community, and this is a way, this is one of those ways that enables us to do that, is to make an impact. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but it takes finances, it takes money to work. It takes money, it takes finances to do the ministry. We don't just sit around and God puts in, puts in dollars in our bank account every week and says, there you go, there, there's your allowance. It doesn't work that way. You know how it works? When we collectively, as a church family, come together and say, this is, this is my part. This is what I'm doing. Uh, one of the reasons I, I'm really encouraging you, encouraging you, connecting with us on Wednesday night, um, David has uh, an insight and a depth that, that I can't have just because of he's just a day or two older than I am, so his experiences are a little more than mine. Do you like, do you like how I did that? I just, <laughs> right? But we collectively, now don't minimize, and he, he said this a while ago, one of the things he's going to talk about, don't, don't talk yourself out of your blessing. We minimize what we feel like the Lord's asking us to do, and we minimize, oh, it's not that important. Well, it's important for you to be obedient, and it's important for you to put your peace in and allow the Lord to take it and multiply it. Don't. Don't justify it or devalue what God's calling you to do, but over the next several weeks, we're going to communicate that because I believe that God is calling us as, a, as individuals, but also as a body, as a, as a body of believers to be kingdom seekers. There is great blessing in being a part of the kingdom. Be a kingdom seeker. Father, I just pray that in these moments this morning, that the Holy Spirit would challenge us, that the Holy Spirit would convict us, that the Holy Spirit would teach us, that even the Holy Spirit even today would begin to, to speak to our hearts as to what to give um, in, in regards to our 2023 impact fund. Lord, I, I'm just praying that we, would, that we would rise in our spiritual faith, rise in our spiritual maturity, and Lord, um, have open hands to you knowing that you have open heavens. You'll open up the heavens towards us. And we thank you for it. Lord, give us the courage. Give us the grace. Give us the faith to be obedient to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Before we leave today, though, I, want, I have one other thing. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, the greatest decision you could ever make is to say yes to Christ. It's not about joining our church, even though we feel like um, destiny is a great place to be and we, we want to be a blessing to you. We want to we help you in your journey. Um, we want to give you resources and things that will help you um, as you walk out your faith. But... I want you to understand the greatest decision we can ever make is to say yes to Christ. Now, if you understand what Scripture says, Scripture tells us there's going to be a time, there's going to be a place that all of us are going to have to, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Christ, that he is Lord. But we understand that if we'll come to salvation, if we'll say yes to Jesus in this life, let him be the leader of our lives. That he's come to give us salvation because we can't save ourselves. And so if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, I just, 
I, I invite you to say yes to him. What does that mean? What, what do I have to do? Well, we have to recognize that we are a sinner. We recognize that we, we've lived a life that is contrary to his standards, contrary to, to the, the way that we should in relationship with him. We recognize that we can't do anything on our own. We can't save ourselves. The only one that can do that is Christ. And so we ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins. And we ask the Lord to be the Savior of our lives. And in doing that, I'm, I'm going to follow him. What do you mean follow him? What is word, what the word of God says to us to follow him? That's one of the reasons you, we need the church. That's one of the reasons we need discipleship because um, the church is to make disciples, to help you to grow in your faith. So if you're here today and you don't know Christ, will you just pray this with me? Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I recognize that I've lived contrary to you. And I ask, Lord, that you'd come, that you'd forgive me for my sins. And Lord, I ask that you'd be the Lord, the boss of my life. Lord, I choose today to follow you. I choose today to be obedient to your word. I choose today to live my life for you. In your precious name, amen. Amen. If you're online or even if you're here this morning, we have some resources that we'd like to put in your hand. It's, it's not, uh, it, it's just, a, it's a help to you. Maybe you've lived for the Lord a lot of years and you just need some help. I'm going to tell you something. This, is, this little packet is just a blessing to you. You can come and grab one or I think they may have some in the, in the boulevard, in the keys room. I'm not sure. But um, if you want one of these, come grab them. We want to be a blessing to you. If you're online and you made that statement of faith or made that prayer of faith today or you just want somebody to help you, if you'll email us um, at office at destinyfamily.com, we'd love to get this to you. And just be a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand this morning.